Okay, I just want to do a little bit about more graphing. So the first one is about graphing exponential equations. So this doesn't feel so foreign. Just a few more examples. So we'll do, the first example we'll do is just to graph and maybe we'll talk about, so maybe in general, um, we'll talk about some of these graphical characteristics, but I have this negative 2 to the x. Um, and so probably you'll see me make notes about the graph, like how I made it, domain, horizontal or vertical asymptotes, if they exist, and then x and y intercepts. Kind of these things that we think about creating this complete graph. Um, so I want to do this and um, basically I will just create a t-table. I mean going back to the point plotting that we did at the very beginning, <coughs> I know what this kind of looks like maybe, um, except this negative makes me think oh it might look different than what I think. Um, so I, but I might just plug in a few points. I know in general, like exponential equations, if I was going to, hold on, I'm going to get some graph lines on here. Okay, there we go. So if I was going to draw this, let me just put this down like this, and I might go across here. I know that a lot of the major points, and even if I'm just labeling these, like by 1's, 2, 4, 6, minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, that a lot of the kind of stuff that I typically expect to happen happens in this range. So I'm just going to plug in like these five points and see if I can get a general shape, right? So then I plug in negative 2 to the negative 2 power. Just to be clear, this negative out front is not included in the power. So my final result should be negative. So this is negative, and then I'm going to raise 2 to the minus 2 power. 2 to the minus 2 power is the same thing as 1 over 2 squared. So this I get 1, negative 1 fourth. Okay? Um, same thing here, I'll do the same thing, and I should get negative 1 half. Um, here I get 2 to the 0 is 1, this should be negative 1. Um, 2 to the first power is 2, so I should get negative 2. 2 to the second power is 4, so I get negative 4. So all these are negative values because of that negative out front. Okay, now, okay, and so now I can see at where this kind of lives. It's all in this negative portion. But then it's also a very reasonable scale. I might just keep the same scale I have on my x-axis and then I'll put these points down. So at negative 2 I get negative 1 fourth, negative 1 half, negative 1. Oops, that point is in the wrong place there. Okay, and so I'm guessing because of the shape that I know about exponential equations, I'm guessing if I connect these dots, it might look something like this, and then it might just keep going like this. See? So from this graph, I think, and because I know originally um, exponential equations have a horizontal asymptote, my impression here, and I might if you want to, you can plug in a few more values or values that are far out to the right. So if you plugged in 100, you would see that you get negative 1 over 2 to 100 power. So it's something really small, but slightly negative. Um, so I get a horizontal asymptote still of y is equal to 0. Um, I see domain for exponential functions, unless something weird is happening, should be minus infinity to infinity. Range here should go from minus infinity up to zero. Um, what else were we supposed to talk about? Oh, x and y intercepts. So I see the y intercept, right? Here. 
That's negative 1. Because this has a horizontal asymptote, there should be no x-intercept. Okay? Okay. Let me do another one. Um, let me find it. Okay, so then a second example is f of x is equal to e to the x plus 1. Um, and this is just another base, e, you should have e on your calculator. It's usually above the log function, natural log, on your calculator. So again, I'm just going to plug in some values, again thinking that likely, like there's nothing big happening here, right? I'm not adding a hundred or subtracting a million or something like that. So I expect this to kind of live in the same place that my normal exponential functions live. And so I'm really going to start um, probably right again in this region and just see what's happening, right? So if I have some reason, like if there's a 10 in there, I might shift this around or something like that. But so I get negative 2. So I'm just going to use my calculator on, and I'm going to plug in e um, to the negative 2. and then plus one. I put the negative two, so I put, on my calculator it looks like this, e, this caret, negative two, plus one, and I use parentheses to make sure the whole negative two um, went in there. So let me do that. Equals, and I get about 1.135. Let me plug in negative 1, 1.368, plug in 0, I get 2, um, let me plug in this one, 3.718, and finally 2, 8.389, okay. Um, so I have this negative 2, and so now I'm going to go ahead and make this again because these values aren't that wild. I'm just going to make this a, kind of a one-point scale, but I've made two separate decisions. What should my x scale be? What should my y scale be? Um, negative 2 and 1.135 is here, negative 1 there, 0, 2, 2, okay. So I kind of see this basic shape. Um, over here, it's unclear if this is going to go down to 0. I might plug in a point like way far out here. So I might plug in minus 100 and see about where it is to find this kind of asymptote. So at minus 100, my thing is rounding to about 1. It doesn't look like it, and if you plug in like larger values, it probably stays around 1. So I think that there is, it's approximately 1, a horizontal asymptote like this, and I figured that out just by plugging in a really large negative value. So I have this. and this characteristic exponential shape, okay? So again, domain, minus infinity to infinity, range, based on this asymptote, one to infinity, there's no x-intercept, there's a y-intercept of two, um, and there's a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 1. That's it. Okay, one more. One more. So 3, graph, let's see, f of 
x is equal to 2 to the x over 10. Okay. So I have this, um, and again, I probably will just plug in some values. I mean, I have this divided by 10, so I might think about plugging in some other, like besides working by just ones and I might just hold off. So I might have to do some kind of pattern recognition. I might actually plug in minus 10, minus 5, like 1, 0, oh, negative 1, 0, 1, 5, 10. Like I might make that kind of guess and just see where I am. So I'm going to plug in 2. Again, I'm going to put this in parentheses. Here, oh, there it is. 2 to the negative 10 divided by 10. That should be it. Is equal to 1 half. Oh, that's probably good. Okay, and then negative 5, and I get 0 0.71. Negative 1, 9, 3. At 0, I'm going to get 1, then at 1, we get 1.07, at 5, we get 1.41, and at 10, I get 2. I'd like to see a little bit, do you see how the y values basically go between maybe a half and two. Um, so I might plug in again something really small, negative 100, to see where that is, ha what's happening there. It's getting really close to zero, I think. And then I might plug in like some other values and see how this is increasing like 20 and 30, kind of in 10 increments, increments of 10, just to see what's happening. Kind of, I'm, my question is what's happening on the left side of the graph? So this is on the left. And then these other two is what's happening on the right, kind of end behavior is what I'm thinking about um, in advance of putting this on. So in 30 gives me just eight. Okay, so this is probably enough. Um, it probably is just that this dividing by 10 decreases kind of the rate of, of this exponential growth. Four, six, eight, minus two, minus four, minus six, eight. Oh, shoot. I don't want to do that. I want to kind of get, I think, a little bit bigger scale. Do you see? Um, so maybe I'll go by, yeah, maybe I will go just by tens. And that means maybe some of these won't get plotted, um, but that's okay. Um, and then, but my Y scale, for sure, I just want to go by one. So two, four, six, eight, ten because all these are positive and I want to get up to this 30 and eight right here. Uh, 20 and four, 10 and two, zero and one. I'm gonna skip this five because I don't, I don't care about that. Like I don't care about putting a point in here. Um, minus 10 and 1 half here. And then this other one showed me that my horizontal asymptote is out here at zero. So I honestly won't plot any more of those points. I'll just kind of use that horizontal asymptote to guide this line that I'm drawing. So it looks like this. So again, still domain minus infinity to infinity. Um, range, zero to infinity. There's a horizontal asymptote. It's the line y is equal to zero. There's a y-intercept. It's the line, it's um, at one. There's no x-intercept.